Okay. Well, what I will do today is like give you a introduction to the online gaming, which is like um, our core business as a games broker. We are licensed in games and sub licensing them to other companies. Um, we're from, from Berlin, this is over there in Germany. Um, and this is like the overview of the topics I'll talk about today. This is like the complete value chain you have in an online game, you need a game, you hosting, marketing and stuff. I'll choose everything to use so you basically have a foundation about online games so you know what I'm talking about. Um, and if you're working on it, you know where you are, have your position stuff. So, starting with the game, of course, you need a game in order to, to publish your game. Um, and first of all, I want to talk to you about the importance of online games right now. So, I was schooling some, some, some words like online game, and the results I had for this one was uh, more than 500 million results in Google, which is quite a lot, showing that online game is like, pretty, pretty big right now already. Uh, it's a really big topic. Most of the people know what online games are. I just think most of the people know what online games are. Uh, basically, you have games to play, and online games is like you play with other people online, via the internet, together, together against each other, whatever. Um, these are online games. I will try to, because I don't know you like your your basics. Uh, I'll explain as much as I can, so you don't have like you're not lost in the presentation. So now you know what online games are. Um, and the next term will be MMO. Um, do, is anyone in who doesn't know what an MMO is? MMO? Um, it's Massive Multiplayer Online. Basically it's a massive, massive multiplayer online game, which means a massive amount of online players play together at one moment at the same place, plays with each other, against each other, whatever. Um, this is an MMO. And there are MMORPGs, like there are role playing games as an MMO. And I'd like to, you to estimate how many results Google has for MMORPGs because we know there are 70 million, about 70 million results for MMOs. And I'd like you to, get, to guess like how many results Google has for MMORPGs. Like you think it's more or less or way less or lots more? What do you think? Twice as much. Much, much twice more. as much. Why, why more? Twice. Well, oh, because the that's the most popular genre of MMO RPG. Yeah, but it's like a sub genre of MMOs. Like well, it sounds absurd, and it's probably true. Well, that's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you all think the same, or do you disagree? Probably because I would disagree. Because like, if you look for cars, you should be have more results than looking for like hats or whatever. Well, if you're in America, if you search for cars and then for GMC, for example, right, it's no wonder that GMC maybe put more for results. Right? Or okay. Ford, for example. Can you say something? You're right, but it's like <laughs> <laughs> the double amount. Please. <laughs> I'll stay here. <laughs> it's more. So, a lot more, but it's definitely more. Uh, we'll come back to that later, but this is completely correct, and I think this is like some kind of astonishing because it's like the most, uh, most likely, most, most, most important genre in the MMO. The people like to play uh, another character. They like role playing. They like to be uh, a dwarf, an orc, an elf, whatever. Astonishing. Right? So free to play is like um, there are basically there are two kinds of MMOs, and once you have to pay on an on a monthly basis, subscription based or free to play games. And looking for free to play, you only have like slightly more than one million results. It's like, okay, this seems to be a time topic. So, obviously, the people are not looking for free to play games, but for MMOs or online games. Yeah, lots of more there. Browser games, again, just a little part. And browser games are very popular in Germany. Um, they're basically the games you can play in a browser without installing everything without downloading anything. You just uh, choose a game, let's say a strategy game with a middle age setting. You enter your, your, your name and your email address, probably your gender, and that's all. And you can stop playing. You don't have to do anything else. 
that, therefore they're pretty successful because they're able to generate lots of players, and most of them are free to play. I think there's no browser game where you have a subscription fee. The most subscription-based games are client games where you download the game, which is like 10 gigabytes, for example, and you have to wait for to, you know, to get it downloaded, and then you can start playing it. Um, most of the browser games are free. Uh, they make money, of course. I'll tell you later how and why and how much. But I think uh, this is like a really little numbers. Like, wait, is it 54 million? Oh my god, that's. Wow. <laughs> wait. This is a lot. What is this? <laughs> this number changed while I was talking. So this is good. I was wondering why it's, it's so little because. Oh, very good. So. Browser games, they're, as I said, they're, they're huge. I was wondering why this is so they're probably like this spell or so. Um, they're probably all over the world. The, the, for example, the, the Latin American people love to play uh, browser games because they don't have this cool P PCs. They have old PCs with uh, lots of uh, just little of RAM and, and crappy graphic cards or whatever. Um, therefore, they love to play browser games because they don't like the need to don't have to any any specifications for it. You can just start playing without buying a new PC. Therefore, it's good that it's like four million results. World of Warcraft. Another estimation I want to have from you. What do you guess? Like more than this eighty-eight from from the MMORPGs? Less? Sorry. I think it must be the client. It it should be. It's like the same discussion as I had with the because basically you have like the, the, the term <laughs> MMORPG and everything else is beneath it. So the first thing you want to do is like you want to play an MMORPG. So you don't Google World of Warcraft, you Google MMORPG and then you choose OK. So it should be less. Okay? I, I think you see already that it isn't less because it's like more than 30 million. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the person who wants to play an RPG, who knows what for is an open RPG, doesn't search for an RPG, he's searching for World of Warcraft. Of course, there are other reasons, like people talking about World of Warcraft because they play it already, because telling the same things like, yeah, I'm the best at WW, you know, we say Germany, uh, I have this mount, I have this sword, I'm the best, and can you help me there, whatever. It's like, Topic to people talk about, therefore it's so important on Google. But nevertheless, it's like more important than my RPGs on Google. Just giving you a little introduction to the importance of all the uh, words in the, the online gaming business. Okay. Starting with all the genres and varieties of online games. Basically, you have three different kinds of online games. You have social games. You know them from Facebook probably, like Farmville and stuff. They look amazing, they make a lot of fun, they're clicking all the time. These are social games. And they're social because you play with your friends, you can invite your friends, you can uh, show your results, you can show that you have two new crops, which is amazing. Uh, your friends will say, see it on Facebook or on any other social network, or like other social networks like Orkut from, from Google, probably know it, it's like very famous in Latin America. Uh, in Germany, it's Studio VZ in Russia, it's contacted it's like more than 150 important uh, social networks, and most of them have games. Um, the games on those uh, uh, sort of networks are social games, and you play with your fans. Um, the other kind of online games is you see there client games. Client games are basically the games you download a client for. You uh, have to install the client, and then you can start playing. You have to register too. You have to provide your email address and your name and stuff, but this client is necessary. The good thing about this is the games look way better. You have better graphics. If you have a racing game, you actually see the car. In the browser game, you often have like only uh, numbers, like your well, car is able to drive 100 miles per hour and you won against your competitor. Uh, it's like only um, number based, you, so you actually don't see the racing itself in, in the browser games. It's changing because of their new technologies, but basically the client games are the games where you actually can play like you, you're used to it on, on your console, like PlayStation or on your PC games, like the, 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 the 
common games, which are not online. Um, these are the client games. And the third game uh, version is the browser game. It's, um, like somehow the, the oldest version is like the games you have in your browser and you don't have to, to install anything. Um, they're really close to the social game because both of them uh, don't need a client and you can just start playing whenever you want and wherever you want. Basically, you could play at home and uh, look in at, 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 at some event for a blog, for example, if you can see and play there too. So basically, you can play your, your phone right now and, uh, in, while I'm talking and then will be later at home, you can keep on playing. Which is very important is like all the online games are persisting online games. So if you ever played a game, you started your, your, your round, for example, from a strategy game like Command Conquer, for example. Probably the guys know it or you have your round, you have you build your, your army and your, your 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 buildings and then you win and then the runs over. In online games it's like a persistent world. You keep on playing. Uh, you cannot save your game because it's like safe all the time. You, you can log in whenever you want and uh, all the people can fight against you even though you're not online. This is like very interesting because um, it's very important for the payment because the people are willing to pay for things like special tanks for example because they know after the round they're still there because there are no rounds. This is the German page. There is uh, an English pendant um, showing all the varieties and I would like to talk about this. Can you read this? Where are the words? Okay, right. Basically, these are the genres. You have strategy, RPG, simulation, like Farm World, for example, sports, fun, 3D, action, racing, and managers. So, like, RPG, essentially, uh, are like the most common, the, the most favorite games because some of people like to be another person. They like to be a hero or like, like a governor or whatever in what, what game. Uh, therefore, they play those games. Like they love the richer world because being another person. This is a really uh, like it's a lot of fun, but it's kind of scary to me. Uh, I'll talk more later uh, mm -hmm. as soon as I reach the addiction part. Right? So it's like online games is a serious topic because lots of people are addicted. There's you can read about them. Like I, I heard about the story from Chinese parents. They had a child. And at the same time, they played a game where they had to care about a baby. And they had to feed this baby in the game, to wash it, wherever. And it's like just, just a rumor, or just read it somewhere. And the real baby died because they forgot about it, because they played all day long this ritual game, and the real baby died. This is a crazy, um, really, this is a serious topic. Yeah. Um, so, RPG is fun, but dangerous. Uh, strategy. Um, like, it's like the second most famous genre because like, you can build your, in the Middle Age game, you have your castle and your soldiers and your you know, horse riders and whatever, and you build your army and fight against others. The bad thing about it is you can play with your friends. You can have uh, like the, the, the same armies together. You can, you can uh, found uh, unions and play against other unions and you have lots of communication, you find friends online, you play together all day long and all night long uh, and like, basically it's 70% men playing it, only less women, but for the women we have games like fun, like, I don't know what kind of games you girls like here in Ireland, but our girls enjoy like, like all those tiny games where like or the match three games with the like Tetris or like things with everything is like just fun games. <laughs> uh, they're like fashion games for girls where you can feel like your your doll and you can buy dresses or whatever. I think I have speeches later. Uh, so like there are basically there are games for everyone, of course, because the developers want to tackle any target group. Therefore like they're trying every genre and they have like you have of course poker games, which are basically online games. You do, well, you know, you play against other people online poker. It's like great. You can do it. You don't have to leave your house. Uh, you can even win money or lose a lot, probably. Um, <laughs> so there are lots of genres, and if you like slightly interested in games, you will find the genre that fits uh, your needs. Okay. Um, this example for a middle age 
social game on a social network. It's not released yet. Um, this is one of our clients. You see my Facebook picture. You see anything? It's really good because it's a uh, You see all your friends you have. Um, it's really interesting because this is the CEO of a Bulgarian uh, game developer. This of a Dutch Bulgarian game developer. And I can play with them. I didn't build a lot. I have only one building because I just registered for showing the screenshot. But you can you can do a lot. You can play against them, with them. Um, you have your friends here. You have your daily quests. You see top players, and you have the rankings. Like, there's lots of stuff to do. You can uh, do a lot of this online games. It's not, the graphics are not that astonishing. You, you see, you have the castle. You will see that you will have a uh, uh, lumberjack somewhere here and some mines there. But this is all you'll see in this game, in the social games. Uh, but it's fun because you play with or against other people. Um, of course, you can invite your friends. But you will meet lots of other players, which is like the good thing about it. You will have, basically you will have at some point online friends who meet in the online community, the other topic we'll talk about later, uh, talk to them and there's even community events where like, you, you meet your online friends somewhere in some city you have a beer or whatever because you're interested in meeting them. And the, another funny story is that uh, lots of people who met online uh, meet people in real life and then don't really like them because they see they have no, no common interests, like no, no, not the same interests because one is like 14 and likes football and the other is like a mother with two daughters but likes online games too. By the way, mothers with, with daughters and, and sons are like a very, very important target group for all game developers because they're at home, they have time to play and they're willing to play because they have money because they're husband to work. <laughs> uh, the money. So this is a very, 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 very important target. And you have games like which are created for those mothers because they know they have the money and the time. This is like very important target. Uh, another example for an online game, social game, in a social network is this game is called Vikings of the Thule. It's from some Scandinavian developer. You're a Viking and you develop your your your. This, a mixture of, of RPG because you're writing and developing your your your, your uh, role. On the, hand, on the other hand, it's the strategy game because you fight against other uh, uh, nations. And the social part of it is you can show what you did. Like I did the second level, the rank two, which uh, only one click. Uh, I was really proud, so. Uh, I was thinking I can announce this on Facebook because I'm pretty good at playing some games. Um, so all my friends, all my all my friends on Facebook will see I'm playing this game. If they they see it, they probably start playing it too because uh, I told them somewhere that I played this game and I said, "Oh, it's so amazing!" And I'd like to play it with you or against you, show you my skills on this social network game. Uh, let's play together. This is very good, and this is a very important part of the online games because you don't have this on your console games, not real business. It's changing because they see it's a perfect opportunity to widen your, your customer base. But basically, we don't have these features on these classic games. If you like, played a PC game five years ago, uh, even online against other people, you weren't able to announce your success or your next level or whatever. This is a very important. And that's like one of the basics for the online game, free to play, base game success. Uh, do you guys know this screenshot? Do you know which game it is? Do you see it somewhere? Some farmer. Some farmer, right? Yeah. But like only <coughs> 3 billion different farmers, so. <laughs> I think this is Farm World, so that's like, used to be the biggest social game ever. It changed because the developer called Zynga from the US developed a new game called Cityville. I, I hope you've heard of it because this is like the name of social games. If not, you will learn it now. You will not forget it. Cityville. Cityville is right now the biggest game ever uh, with more than 100 million players. Like, this is a lot. If Ireland is like, how much, how much inhabitants do you have now? 2 million? Four. Four, four, four sorry. Four. <laughs> Okay, so it's like 20 islands. <laughs> this is a lot of people, and 
they're successful. And even though their game is free to, free to play, uh, I will tell you later how they make money. Probably some of you know already, but I was going to. Again, you have this part where you can invite people. I have not had that many friends in this one, but I can invite them, uh, which is good for Dinger because they don't have to pay for marketing. Uh, like basically, I'm doing the marketing for them because I want to have more fans, and they get more players, which is good for them, and this is why they're so successful. Uh, a little screenshot yeah, with the gifts, probably not the gifts on Facebook, but you can send out people gifts. You can put their birthday and like, okay, I want to do the thing, I'm not too late to call. I'll give them a present like a brick. Just <laughs> Basically, you don't need a break, but in the game, you have to build houses and do a saloon, whatever, and you like, you need a break and ask someone, please give me a break and let's do it together, whatever. It's fun to build together. If it's good, you can ask your friends, you can play with your friends, and you will do so because if you don't, it's really boring because you don't see anything but your house and probably two cows, and that's all. And it's only fun because you can see the other cows too, and he has like a new cow, and so I can show you the cow because his cow has yellow points on it. I don't know. Yeah. It's like, this is a fun body because you can play with your friends. Or meet new friends. Uh, this is a little ad. Um, they're using um, the game card. I forgot my game cards. I want to show you. Yeah. Um, it's like a payment method you can use in order to buy those special things on, on Functional. This is another game by, by the Zinger. So this is not, not Farmville, this is not City World, it's Functional. It's completely different. You have three new animals, I think. Uh, but it's like fourth or fifth biggest social game ever. Uh, the game's loading right now, and while it's loading, you can show some ads. So another revenue stream for the Zynga developer. Uh, did you ever hear about Zynga before? No. Good. Who else? Amazing. Do you know why it's called Zynga? Yeah. Yeah? But the logo gives the hint, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the CEO's dog, it was called Zynga. And that was the company's Zynga. Um, I don't know if it makes any sense to have such a name, because I don't know what it means. It doesn't have any meaning, I don't know. Um, okay, basically, like, they're huge. And, like, you have four major social game developers on Facebook. You have Zynga here, and then all the others somewhere here. Uh, one of them is Vuga, I'll talk about this later from, from Berlin. They're pretty new and they will be the second important uh, social media developer, developer on Facebook by the end of this year, I guess, because they're doing several things very, very good and very right, and I'll tell you what these are. So if you want to develop social games, uh, you'll have this knowledge and it will be the third biggest something. Probably. Um, MMORPG. <laughs> I hope you can read it. It's, uh, it's the abbreviation for many men online role playing as girls. We have this role playing part. Uh, if you ever played an RPG online, you'll see lots of female players. And at the same time, you know that like only 30 or 40 percent girls. So you're like, hmm. <laughs> okay, why? I don't know why. I can't tell you why. This is psychology, uh, universe part somewhere there. You can ask them why, why people want to, want, want to play girls. Um, I don't know. But like, they do. And it's like, it's not. Um, Novo is from a Swedish developer. It's a social game, but it's more beautiful. It's like this, this, is, this is actually the screech of the game. It's a, 3D environment, like an MMORPG, but in the browser, on your social, social network. They're pretty new. Um, the CEO of the company is a former, uh, was working for EA, I guess you know it, and he was like responsible for all of the Battlefield series, so he's like pretty experienced in game, but he uh, started to develop the kids game, I don't know why. So this is like, you know, your avatar walking around, Gathering stuff, killing tiny animals. It's quite cute and, and nice. Um, in order to play this one, you have to download not a client. This is like a little add-on to your browser. It's like it's time like let's see how much it is. Uh, 3.9 megabytes. It's like it's, it's time. It takes 
depends on your on your connection, but probably one minute, and then you can start playing in the browser your 3D game. I think it's Unity, yeah, it's Unity 3D. It's a brand new technology, uh, allowing the developers to release a game with the same graphics on, on, on the browser, uh, on the consoles like PlayStation, Xbox, on your mobile phone, using this, using this uh, technology, Unity 3D, which is pretty amazing, and they're very successful in this one. Um, so, even though I told you the social games, the browser games don't look pretty well, I think it will change on the long run probably because the developers will start using this uh, technology more and more. Of course, there are competitors to this technology, but this is like the major link to technology. Unity 3D, you can <coughs> try to remember it probably you need someday, or you know it already. Um, yeah, the second part very important. You don't have to wait or to go to the store or to play the game. You can just start it. It's for free. Again, with a different monetization than Gym. Okay, you know that one. It's huge. Uh, what of Warcraft, you have to buy it in the store. You have to pay every month at least 10, 10, 10 euros. And they just release the virtual store where you can buy things additionally. So having their 13 million registered players, you can calculate the revenue stream is more than 130 million a month worldwide, plus selling the, the retail boxes, plus the virtual online store, which is could be like the most important revenue stream for them. So you have games you can play for free or you have games where you can pay for everything. So they can do it because they're like the leader. You saw the Google ranking that like, most of the people know it. If you talk about online games, they're like, online games, what do you say? What are you Ah, yeah, yeah, my son. Oh, God. <laughs> What's your son? Uh, I played for three months, about five years ago. I, I, I was lucky that I got bored because it's always the same again. You're just walking around, kill animals, gather the stuff, selling the stuff, walk around, kill animals. It's the same. Uh, but there's the important part, the community. You have friends in this game. You meet them, you play together, you, you enter a dungeon together. Um, this is very, very important. Imagine you would play football with our friends, it's like the same thing. Football would be fun. Try to be on a, on, a, on, a, on a football field with one ball, but no one's playing with it. It's boring. The same thing here, it's fun. EVE Online is uh, one of the leading subscription based games. It's from Iceland and it's a spaceship war game with lots of economics in it. So, uh, if you're interested in like all the trading and production things in a game, because you can build like you can build a sword and then sell it to another person and make a revenue out of it. Um, this is a poor part of Eve because it's like a, a whole economy. Uh, basically, there's even a professor studying this game and presenting all the numbers the game generates. Very interesting, to my opinion. Um, it's not for free, and, but you can, I think you can download it for free, and then you have to pay for every month of paying, the playing. Um, and the first two weeks are for free, so you can you you get addicted and you pay. Uh, Roots of Magic is like the counterpart to World of Warcraft. It's for free. It's from a German games publisher called Frogster. Um, it's a huge success because it's like basically it's World of Warcraft. Even the graphics look the same. Probably most of you couldn't like decide what, what graphics are World of Warcraft or which are Roots of Magic, like the comic style you have. But it's for free, so if people are too, too, too poor or too cheap uh, to, to play for a game, then they're just playing this one. Um, and again, there's this monetization part I'll talk about later. Just giving you a slight overview about online games. This is the same, like, basically the same like, like Roots of Magic. You have an, an RPG playing with other players. Uh, a different style, this is Asian, the Asian style, very, very uh, li li liked by lots of German players that like the Asian games. I don't know why. Um, they're really colorful and the girls are like, look like, kind of perfect. And the guys are really strong. Uh, 
the Germans would like. I don't know if you guys like it, but the Germans like it. Uh, for example, the, the Brazilian guys like Asian games, but uh, not these kind of Asian games. I'll show them later again. Um, and this is like another game, fine. That's only RPG. One RPGs. This is World of Tanks. I think you didn't hear about it yet. Come on. Some? That's the he, biggest thing in Russia. Russia. Are you Russian? Yeah. Okay, very good. Very good because uh, this game is in Russia, it's bigger than World of Warcraft. It makes more revenue than World of Warcraft. It's just huge. Um, I met them in Lyon, the, the, the CEO was like, hey, I think it's Alex or Dimitri or something. Uh, we'd like to work with you. And we have this and that, this model. He was like, no. I was like, why? No, no, uh, we buy everything. We don't work with that. We just buy things. And like, I, I was born in Kazakhstan, so I'm kind of Russian too. And I know this Russian approach, like, you're the best. Uh, <laughs> you really have it in this case. Uh, the, I was going to, I was going to, to try the game, but my brand PC was too, too weak for it. I was like, what? But how do they have so many players? I don't know what kind of PC they have in Russia. And uh, right now they're internationalizing. They're trying to tackling the, uh, the Asian market, the European market, so they're growing a lot. So I think on, you will hear about it if you like look at online banners. So. If you're a Google, you're, you're, Google knows that you're an online game player, they will show the banners of this game because uh, they pay lots of marketing. Like this, they pay more than one million euros a month, you know, or just for marketing. So, so they they grow like hell. They have the money. They have the game. It's a huge client game, it's like ten gigabytes. It's like you have to download it for hours, but still they have lots of players. Um, it will be very important. And probably it will be, be World of Warcraft said someday, which will be good because I think all the players or the friends of players are bored from talking about uh, RPGs and playing as girls. So it's time for tennis now. We'll see. Probably it will be hit. Um, this is the first example of uh, an all RPG without a client. So you play in the browser, the browser you don't have to down anything. You log in or you register with your, your email address and you can start playing. It looks pretty decent, it's fun. Uh, you have the same content, you walk around, you kill animals, you gather the stuff, you sell it, you walk around, whatever. Um, again, Asian, and there's a Russian game lover again. This game is called Fragoria, I don't know if you've heard of it. Fragoria? No. The developer is called Darkcroft Entertainment. Um, <laughs> They're, they have a pretty good game, but it's very difficult to work with them. But the game is really, really good. It's like you have this character, you walk around, you can, you can have your, your, your mount, your pet, whatever, and do the quests. Quests are very important, but I didn't talk about quests anyway. Quests, you know what quests are in games? Like, you get tasks. Kill this animal 100 times, and they'll give you three <coughs> coins of gold. And this is what you basically do in other games. You do quests, uh, make your missions or tasks, whatever. Um, and of course, this game has quests too, which is like a very important part. And if you're going to translate to localize games, I think the quests will be the core thing you have to translate. Like, hello, I am Dimitri, the Russian warlord. Please kill 100 dwarves for me, so I can. This is what we're going. To do, what we'll be translating. And you will have to know all the terms like quests and 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 the others. <laughs> <laughs> Just, they're quite knowledgeable. <laughs> yeah, I think you can do the request. And uh, yeah, terms like like mounts and raids and whatever important terms for online games. You will know it. Um, <coughs> If you really want to learn them, just play a game for one week and you will know everything about it, about the online gaming business. As a player, it's not that difficult. It's good because uh, this way lots of people can play it actually. So, the most boring topic I have to talk about is hosting. It will be pretty short. You need a server for your game someday. Um, you can rent it somewhere. Just Make sure it's on the time server for a huge game. So if you have, it's more, the more players you have, the bigger the server has to be. And depending on the game, the, the, the server's power has to be accordingly. Um, 
we have one example in our company, we just helped a German game developer. They have a girls game, by the way. It's, it's a girls kind game. It's a mixture of lots of mini games in it, and sheep racing, and match three games, and diamond games, whatever. Um, we helped them to tackle the Brazilian market, and they need special servers, and the, the price for the servers in Brazil was 70,000 a month, uh, 70,000 dollars, because they had to import them from America, uh, with like, too expensive, because in the beginning the game makes like 10 or 20,000 revenue, doesn't make sense to pay 70,000 for, for the servers, so the, the thing we did, we rented servers in the US directly, which was like 300 bucks a month, which was like affordable, and I hope, I hope this will work, because we didn't release the game yet, so if there will be lags, the lags uh, it will be our fault, but this is going to be my problem. <laughs> marketing. Very important. So uh, basically, uh, marketing is everywhere. I love this picture, because like, <laughs> it's true. So uh, if, you're, if you're browsing, you have advertisement everywhere. So if you probably have a blocker, an ad blocker, but it's still there. You don't see it, but it's still there. So um, just as an example, Google has, of course, ads. Like the thing, it's, it's helping you to find things. Now it's helping you, helping the, the people having things to sell them to you. So you, you're looking for something, and Google knows, oh, he wants to buy shoes. So let's show every place you can buy shoes and make money of it. So this, this is why Google is, has lots of money because they have like, the perfect. They had a business idea for the, for the internet um, showing all these cool ads. Amazon has, is full of, full of advertisement, mostly for itself, but sometimes uh, advertising other stuff. Um, this is a German uh, news page for browser games. So if you are interested in browser games and you want to read about it, you want to read about the newest games, the, you want to, to, to see some tests, for example, you'll probably find this page. And then, um, <coughs> talking about marketing, the thing about what's, what's sold in, the, in this page. You, can, you see that there is branding. This must be advertisement. There is like a, a banner for, for a hospital game. There is another one. Here's Google. You think this is sold. But showing you what, what sold is like this. Like everything. Even the tests. If you call them and say, okay, I have this brand new game. It's called Elex. Uh, can you write a test about it? And they're like, okay, sure. How much uh, advertisement do you want to buy? And you're like, oh, okay. Let's say 500 euros of, uh, of, of marketing. And they'll say, okay, you'll get the 5 out of 10. I said, what? But my game's better. Yeah, we're better is like 2,000 a month. Like, oh. So <laughs> uh, it looks to be somehow corrupted. It is. Mm. But People don't talk about it, of course. Uh, I had a friend of mine working for a hand company from Hamburg. She wrote her bachelor thesis about this topic. She bought like magazines, the, the game magazines you have with all the ads in it, and compared the amount of ad for a game ads for a game with the rating it, with the game received. And like surprisingly, the more ads you have for the game, the, the better was the ranking. <laughs> um, she wrote about it and she got into lots of trouble. But pretty famous in this case. Um, oh yeah. So this is this bit. Do you see the the, the black <coughs> edges thing? This is like the only thing not sold. But there are like tournaments and stuff. Probably not sold too. I'm not really sure. But this is like the only thing not not, not sold in this page. And I'm, I'm not criticizing them. They have to do it because this is the only way they can earn money because uh, they cannot like. Uh, request money for you reading the, 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 the articles. That's like a lot of marketing on their pages. Um, so again, marketing is everywhere. Don't trust all the things, all the ratings because of their bought. Even though they're, they're, paid, they're not paid for anything, they lie. Um, I, hope, I hope I'm not the bad guy at, at this point because I don't want to say bad things about the business uh, we do in the online gaming business. Okay, what gets left? Uh, the same thing here, we, can, we could start guessing, like there is a part, so this one, this one. This game is 15 years old. It's still existing and they're very they're successful in, in Latin America, by the way. Just, just a little hint, Tibia, 
I doubt you heard it. Did you? Okay. This is a screenshot out of a forum. Forums are talk about, talk about like in ten minutes, but even there is marketing. So this is like the, the, the place people can talk to each other, talk about problems, talk about things which could be improved. But what does the developer do? He sells it. He, he this developer, this the Bulgarian one, makes advertisement for, for his own games. Like, oh, you're playing our can wash game, you can play all the others too. Why not? So again, the German page with lots of ads on it. And do you know this one? Did you ever see this? I'm pretty sure you did. Think? Did I'm drinking and you think. Can at least guess. Oh, it's the Facebook ads. <laughs> right. Very good. It's, it's, it's a Facebook ad. Um, again, if you block it, uh, you won't see it, but it's there. Um, and it's targeted pretty, pretty well. So it knows that you are a girl and you like to study and you do this and that and you have lots of fans and you like radio head and you like football and then you get the, the ads directly for you. It's like perfect because uh, it will work. The conversion rate, meaning the, your, your willingness to click on it to see what's behind it is very high because uh, they're targeted, targeted marketing. Uh, there are fails. This red color is not my features. This is just a screenshot that stole somewhere. It's really ugly. This guy, Ricardo, is married, but there's this thing like parties and singles to him. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't always work. So, of course, there are like mistakes in it, but the core business is pretty perfect. And they will find it. You know, the internet knows lots, of you, lots about you. They know more than you think, which is scary. Um, but you can change it. We really can. Um, in Germany, it's, like, it's a huge topic, and especially Facebook, with all this policy showing everything to his partners. Uh, it's a huge topic in Germany, and still the players love to register there. And they think because of ticking someone, telling something like, don't show my personal information, mm -hmm. they think they won't show it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. No, no, they won't. Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> so, <laughs> imagine imagine uh, if, if someone would buy Facebook with all this 550 million people information on it, they would use it. They would buy Facebook because of the information about the people. So, like, any company, they can do, send you everything to email address because they don't care. Probably they get sued for 100 million, but they will earn 3 billion, so they don't care. This is the problem with it. Um, this is like a really beautiful circle uh, for social games. Um, it's for social games, not for boss games, more for client games, for the games on the social networks. So if you have a game, you buy marketing. This little slice here. Um, that would be 1,000 euro or whatever. Um, marketing, in this case, is not the important part on social networks. The important parts are the viral marketing. Viral marketing, is it something you know? Mm -hmm. What could it be? YouTube videos, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, basically, it's not only for games, it's for, for everything. For every YouTube video we have, showing it to friends, talking about it, this is viral marketing. And the things you have is invite your friends, Tell your friends you're the best at whatever. This is viral marketing. Talking about this game. And the people who know about your game, and the other, other people will start playing the game because they know you like it. Um, <coughs> this is viral marketing, very important. And the other part, which is like the same size, is cross promotion. Cross promotion is basically mm, you have <coughs> one million players in one game, you release a new, world, a new game, and you tell your players there's a new game, play it. And like, 1,000 will change the game, and as you know that you have the players who registered but didn't play at all, just one click and stop playing, you have the information. So you know they, they're, they're not interested in this uh, farm ball, but probably they're interested in fraud ball. It's like completely different. So you try to tackle them and say, tell them to play the other game. This is cross promotion, very, very important in the, all, the whole uh, online business. Like every company does it. Of course, they, does, they do because it's like for free for them. It's like the only thing you have to pay for is this one. And this is like only little part. And this is like the reason for the success of free to play. It's like, like this thing here. Because 
you have a game, if it's quite good, the people will talk about it, and because it's free, the people will play it. Uh, if you're lucky, people will pay for it. Um, if not, it's like that, you will stop publishing it. But this is the core business. Um, on client games, it's uh, way different. Like this marketing part would be way bigger because it's more expensive to get people playing a game where you have to download it, to install it, you need requirements on PC, so probably would be like 30% or 40. The cost promotion would be more important, very important, and the wider marketing is less, but still working. Because it's more difficult to convince a friend to tell him, hey, please download this game, just think about it, register, start playing. And this is very difficult, so the, the wider marketing is less, still important, but less. Do you know? You know Lord of the Rings, okay? I hope so. Does anyone not know Lord of the Rings? Like at least the books? Mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings. Okay. Okay. Um, we're going to try a cool thing right now. Um, Lord of the Rings used to be a subscription-based game, a client game. You download it and you pay for it. There's an upfront fee because you have to buy the, the game at the store. And then you pay every month like 10 euros. They changed their business model. And then they had a TV ad. I want to show you that. Hope it works. No! May I allow? Community management. Mm -hmm. The thing I talked about already. 
you have friends online, you talk to them, there must be a basis you can talk to them. These are the forums. You know, who doesn't know, who never used a forum before? Never. Like, so you know what a forum is. You register. You have your, your, your chosen name, like Crazy Hero 75 and you can start talking to other people. You can start talking about the games. You can start talking, asking them for help. For example, I have 3 billion, this is the pirate game, I have 3 billion pirates, but I don't know how to use them. They will help you, because people are nice. They like to help. They, they like to communicate, they like to help. On the same side, they like to complain. So everything that's wrong, they will tell you here. And you will see it. All the other players will see it, your competitors will see it, because it's, it's, it's open, so it's accessible, accessible for everyone. So this is very important to have your community managers uh, dealing with these forums, deleting bad comments like, mm, mm. <laughs> and um, those things have to be deleted because it's, they're not good. And they're not supposed to be shown to everyone in, in the internet. On the same the same thing you like is uh, fights. If someone is like, they defeated another one in the game, and another one is like, you mean person, why did you kill all my chips? And they like start a fight, and they're not always on the polite level. So you have to tell them, please stop. If you don't stop, you'll delete your account, whatever. Just take care that they're not telling bad things about your company, and about the game, and about each other. And you have to motivate them right in there, like have um, creative tournaments, like draw a picture of the pirates, which would be like the, the pirates of the Caribbean <coughs> pirates that are doing that, but most probably, like tell the people to do something in these forums, or let them play guessing games, so I'm guessing a number between 1 and 1000, and the person who is guessing right, or most closer to it, will get something. Very important, so the people will start uh, talking to each other because this playing which even though you're playing with each other doesn't mean you're talking to each other on this forum so they have, you have to make them talk to each other because as soon as you have, to, as you have the fixed community uh, which is the core for your game so if they're happy they're willing to pay and to play and to keep on playing so basically you have to care for them on this forum so like you have a, the first page the landing page and then like uh, sub categories like this is the official announcements like there will be a new channel next week whatever and this is example for another game just the same thing you have a forum it's beautiful you have the same topics that they see the first advertisement already marketing everywhere um, and even in the forum they will be like oh I'm playing this other game like it's it's called it's it's not Cam Wars it's Man Wars, it's way better. You have to delete it because it's your forum, you have the rights to delete things. Uh, you don't want to have other companies having marketing on your page. This is like an example for, for a bad forum, it's the Russian, Russian gamer again. Uh, it's so beautiful, it's like not active at all, there are zeros and no other numbers in front of it, so it's bad. Um, a bad example, it shouldn't be like this. It has to be at least look better and you need an activity. So if you have one million players and none of them is using the forum, something is going wrong, which means basically like no one of this one million registered players is active play, actively playing the game, which is wrong and you have to change it. How? I'll tell you later how because that is kind of support. Um, if a person wants to complain, if he has a problem, or he bought something and it, it didn't appear, he's going to write an email like, hello Mr. Support Man, uh, I didn't receive my holy sword, please send it to me right now, or I'll call the police, they're really, really mean to you. They're like, sir, could you please, like, I paid 10 euros, I didn't receive anything, I hate you, I'll sue you. This is the message you get, and you have to stay calm, of course, like, like in the call center. Say, Excuse me, sir, uh, we'll deal with that <coughs> as soon as possible, this is your business, this is your job. Put it in yours, but the supporter's job. And they have this tool, they can see all the messages, and they'll take care about it, as soon as they can and as good as they can. A real good mm, program for such a supporting is ranking players. 
ranking them uh, with their activity, with the amount they paid. Um, so if the pay payer is paying a lot, it will be like on the top of it. And this is like the first message you'll answer because he's a very important player. If they it never play a pay and he's playing for like two days only and has to complain like the game's shit, you don't care, you like answer him after twelve hours or whatever. Uh, but responding time should be should be more because um, they're mm, I don't think sure they want the answers as, as soon as possible. <coughs> and they don't stay calm and probably they will write you 10 minutes within 5 minutes because they don't, didn't receive an answer yet. So they will start yelling at you and you will be asked, always. The payment thing, the important part. So the games are free, you can play them. You don't even have to buy a fancy PC, but the companies need money. And the things you pay for are special items. Examples of course. A weapon. You can buy a better weapon than the others. And it looks better, it's probably stronger, it has additional grenade parts or whatever. You can buy fancy swords, like it's, it's, it has flames, or, for example. You can show off, you have the best sword, it's for, the people know it's very expensive, and they see you playing, so they want to have it too. So the game is for free, but they can buy fancy things and they will do it. Like a mount. Mounts are the vehicles in the game. It can be like a horse or a dragon. So you want to have a horse like this, or a dragon you can fly with all of the 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 kinds of landscape arrows. Look, this he's, he's a rich guy. And <laughs> you won't be the rich guy if you pay. And for this mount you pay fifty euros or so. Probably, for example, it's like uh, the cheap things and very, very, very exp expensive things. And the, the best thing, which is me again, is even though you buy them, um, they get used, they get bad again, they get destroyed, for example, and you have to buy them again. So, and the people, the people are willing to pay for it. Um, basically, the publishers are bad guys implementing so many things you want to have, so you buy other things. Like for me, when I want to have new shoes and I'm in the store. Entering the source for free, but having the shoes is expensive, and I want to have all of them. So I buy this one, and then on the Sometimes, I don't know how, how it happens, I love the shoes most, which are the most expensive ones. <laughs> it's an accident, and it's only to me that it happens. And then you, you start thinking, will I pay for it or not? Then you do. Because you want to have them. And if you want to have them, you will. If you can't afford them, you will do it. Content. They're like karaoke games. You can only sing the amazing Lady Gaga song if you pay two euros for it. Two euros is like nothing. It's one one SMS. But the payment method I'll talk about in five minutes. Um, you pay for it because you want to do it. The other people again will see you will sing the Lady Gaga song. You don't sing Radiohead, one, the free stuff. You sing the same Lady Gaga, the most popular singer or actress. Not actress, but singer. Ever. Um, costumes, like this dress in a browser game, it's exclusive. You only get it for real money. And you get paid because all people see you have this really fancy black dress. Pretty short thing. <laughs> Cars. Of course. Why, why not? If you have a racing game and they see you have the, the Red Bull uh, racing car, and like, oh my god, he's this Sebastian Vettel. He's like the superstar. Uh, and they know you paid for it and you're okay with that because you want to be somewhere here. It's like the human thing. You want to be better and you're willing to pay. Uh, and they're like, it's not like not paying and paying. It's like that people are not paying. But lots of them, like 90% are not paying. But the 10% above is like there are people paying a little, so some more, maybe 10 euros a year, a month. But there are people paying 3,000 euros a month for, for playing a game. And then like, oh. Let's prepare more things we'll have because, like, like the, the kings in the Raiden region, they play these games too. And they buy things and then give it to their friends, for example, because they can, they have the money. <coughs> and the most famous, uh, or very famous German developer, they have a game called Chavian. Probably you know it because they have like 10 trillion of players. Um, so they are well known everywhere for browser game players. And they have only one player paying in the Raven region with this the king spending hundreds of thousands a month. So it makes sense to develop things only for him, so he buys them. 
This is from a browser game, so you're not only paying for, for, for virtual goods like a sword or a car, you pay for uh, things that can help you. For example, if you have uh, a gold mine, if you pay for if you pay one euro, this gold mine will uh, generate more gold, like one percent more gold for the next six hours. Or your horses will be faster. So if you're attacking a guy, uh, oh, he, he's attacking you. He's saying like one hundred horses, and you're like, oh, what should I do? Uh, then you pay for the feature like your horses are faster, so you know there are not, no horses in this castle. You'll send your horses faster than his. Destroy his castle and on the way back kill his horses. Um, because the people want to win, they will pay for it. And the, the publishers and developers are willing to allow those things. Uh, balancing is a very important thing here. Of course, you kind of like make them uh, unreviewable. Um, there must be some, some balance between paying and playing, and not paying, uh, which is very difficult, but uh, doable. So basically, cannot say you can buy <coughs> one billion horses at one day and kill everyone. This will be possible, but like it's, it's difficult to say. You have this attractivity to pay for it, but it shouldn't be too strong in order to destroy the <coughs> non-paying mood. Because if there are no people anymore who are not playing, there are only playing users, and then the paying users will, will stop playing because they won't have like these people who are not playing. They're paying. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. No. <laughs> Somebody could show off in front of you. Yeah, exactly. So again, this, you want to be better, and if like all of the same stuff, improve. Um, now, how you can spend money online? There are like infinite possibilities to pay. You can pay with your phone. You can pay with paper cards. So you can you can write an SMS. You can call. You can pay with a credit card. You can do bank transfer, you can everything. In Brazil, you can even go to a bank, uh, give them your cash money, and they will load your account. They like, uh, invented this payment method because uh, the Brazilian players are not used to credit cards, most of them don't have credit cards, and the players using credit cards are not trusting in the internet. So they don't want to provide their, their credit card number or whatever. So they really prefer to go to the bank and pay there with cash. Uh, and SMS, of course. Like SMS is like the most uh, most important payment method. The problem for the developer is that it's pretty expensive. So if a person pays one euro for for with an SMS for a thing, the developer gets only 20 cents of it or 30 cents. If the player uses the credit card, you get the whole euro, for example. Um, so this is why they have to like make the credit card more attractive to the players. Very difficult, but there are ways. And uh, basically, you click on, the, I just clicked on the diamond, you have this window, this is ours, uh, you choose, for example, this 220 diamonds for 10 euros. You click on buy now, and I have the screen again, the screen again, just zoom in for you, and then you can choose your country. This for uh, Latin American games, so you have all the Latin American countries there, you choose your country, for example, Brazil, and then you have like an overview of the price in the euros, the price in the local currency, which is real, uh, and like an overview. And then you can choose if you want to pay with credit card, Visa, or PayPal, you know, PayPal. Yeah. Yeah. It's like really safe uh, way of, of paying for your things. And I, I like it a lot, and it's, it's good for, for money transferring, whatever. Uh, it's the, it's what's bought by the Google, uh, by eBay five years ago or so. That really huge and very important for for Google, for eBay and all the companies having um, their things online. So, did you understand the very important part of payments? So the games are free, but the people willing to pay they pay lots, lots, lots of, of euros or 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 real or whatever. And this way, the companies make money. Even though the game was for, for 10 bucks, like lots of, lot, lot of variants for 10 bucks a month, uh, now they're making more money with having the game free and with paid content. The, the term for it. The analytics. Um, I have only one slide for it because it's more talking than I can show you. You have to uh, have a close 
look at your players. Why do they stop playing after three minutes? Probably there is a quest too, too, too difficult, for example. Or what are the things they love to pay most for? Like do they pay, like prefer the do they prefer playing pay for the sword or for the for the bounce for the horse or whatever? <coughs> so you have to have a really close look at that one because um, you don't just release a game and then let it make money. You improve it every month. You change things. You do A/B testing. So you to test two different things. Do like if you have a game. Like, they try this dress in two colors, and uh, they have the same price. And then have a look at it. Do the people prefer the black one or the red one? And if they see all oh, players prefer black dresses, then they start developing more black dresses. So this improvement is very important. So because talking about the numbers, they're like the conversion rates. The conversion rates there are several ones. The first conversion is you have. Uh, your Google, for example, and there is a Google ad. The first conversion is from seeing this ad to clicking on it. So the, the, the click conversion. When you click on it, you uh, reach a landing page of the game, like Fragoria, the best free to play, blah, blah, blah. And the next conversion would be landing page to registering. So you enter all your details, and this is like a, a huge breakdown because only 10% of this uh, average uh, amount, or 10% of the clicking people, they really register. And because you're paying for the clicks, for example, you have to you need a high conversion rate in order to get the most of the marketing spend, spend on. And then the next conversion will be from the registered to active. So he's in the game, does he like it or not? It depends on how the game is. And if they did their A-B testing well, for example, if they uh, have what they promised before. Um, again, only 10% of the people registering are playing the game actively on a monthly basis or in a daily basis, whatever. At least they play it. And again, only 10% of the active players pay. So if you show an ad, it's like 10,000 people, only one will see will really actually pay for it. This is why it could be expensive, but you have this viral marketing. People talk about so as soon as they are registered and they like it, they will make marketing for you. So you can even like make them do marketing for you because you can tell them if you uh, tell a friend to play our game and she registers, you'll get 10 points. And then, of course, and you'll write an email to any of his hundred Facebook friends and probably 10 will register. And this is free for you because you don't have to pay a thing. And this is like again the reason why online games are successful. And this is the reason why these uh, meetings are important, because you need to know what the people are willing to pay for, you need to know what the people like most of the game, what they don't like, you can only do this um, by having a really close look at the game. Let's so, check the time. Perfect. So I have a special point, a special topic today, which is internationalization, which is important for you, because in order to get the game internationalized, it has to be translated. You cannot uh, release a German game with the German language in Asia. I think the people won't play it. They will push it, probably register, but the conversion will be zero reactive and zero point zero zero two to pay. Uh, there are just some uh, interesting examples. This is a strategy game about Greek, uh, the ancient Greek history. And this is the German landing page, or yeah, the German one. So you see this one, and you register yourself in the game. They have a Korean version too, which is, looks slightly different, like this. You have like the difference is somewhere here. And uh, I think the, the, the guys saw already. Um, it's completely different because of the conversion rate. The people know that the conversion rate here will be low, like let's say two percent. But this one will be twenty percent because like all oh, their boobies in it. Let's play. <laughs> and the, the Asian guys really like pictures like that. You saw the, the Mating 2 game. Um, probably it's uh, exaggerated. I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> probably the are. Probably the Korean girls look like that. I don't know. I, I've never been there. But this is like very important. Yeah. Another example is Shakespeare Pidget. Again, German. By the way, German is very important. The of course. 
Um, and we have a very, lots of successful games. And such a fidget is an um, RPG in the browser. So now the only, you see they have one million players. Um, well, why? Because if you click through all the languages here, it will still be one million, so they uh, combine all the numbers. But they have a <coughs> Japanese version. Like, all the landing pages are the same, except the Japanese version, which is like this. Like, completely different. Like, they didn't just translate it, it didn't, didn't like, just like make the, the Spiel, which is a German game, that changed everything, which is really important because of the conversion rate. Okay? A bad example is the same developer. They have this football game, Soccer Star, with like, less players, only 1,000, less languages. So not that successful, but only if it's older. Anyway, uh, if you were a developer and you would release this game in another account, let's say this is the English version, let's say the Spanish version, what would you change on the landing page? Oh, the football strip. Exactly. How difficult can this be to change like three colors? And did they do? Nothing. Yeah. Maya. That's all. So this is a really bad example because it would be easy. I would I've never known what to change there. Like, I would go wrong creating a devil, adding huge horns, and then releasing him. Yeah, the, the, the men as well are. Uh... Yeah! Oh, it's the blue eyes. I think they like her. Uh, they don't like her. So, uh, so the people are different. It's not enough to translate the game. Uh, so the localization is not enough. You need this cultural adaptation. You can, of course, only do this if you have people who know their country and their habits. Okay, bad example. Uh, tiny example about Brazil. As I said, they love this Asian stuff, but only the, 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 the sweet figures. So this is like the thing that like they don't like the huge boobies and thin legs of the girls. They like these tiny sweet things. They don't know how to play it. Uh, it's pretty successful there. So even though both are Asian, like the classic Asian things, they really prefer those tiny things. Like again, a thing that you need to have local people telling you what's important to change. Okay, almost done. Translation, don't use Google, do it yourself, or because you're professionals, but if you had to buy, pay people, use a professional payment translating company, uh, pay, <laughs> translating company, talking about payment at the time. Mm. All the money in my head. Um, <laughs> translation is important. Make it really, really good because if you translate a, a, a game, like you don't care about the translation, the conversion again will be bad. Probably they will, they will register, but if they see like, hello, good, good game you see, you like play, you will stop playing because it's not fun. You have a quest, amazing story probably behind it, but you don't understand the word, you won't play it. So <coughs> do it properly. Okay, this doesn't work because it's a PDF and I'm really sorry. This is a guy sitting in front of his seat and the server is getting longer and longer, longer and there's like a little text showing that about talking about a picture. So this is like a serious topic in this case. Um, probably heard of it, the addiction part is like the, the bad side about behind it. Um, the bad thing about this is that the developer do all they can to keep you playing. Do they do everything in order to get more players in order to make them play years and years and years? But this is the danger behind it at the same point. Uh, I'm not one of the political guys, but in this case, probably it's necessary to, like, to have some, um, how do you say, like, stopping people from playing 24 hours a day. Uh, there are cases in the Asia which, which are true where people died because they forgot to eat because of playing the game, because the character was healthy and strong and the players, they from the PC forgot to eat. This sounds very funny, but it is not. Uh, and you have to think about it, so just, uh, if you talk to parents or so, they would like, they would like, sitting here and look at them and like, oh no, I'm so scared, I, I, I really worry about my son or whatever. Uh, a serious topic, just think about it. Uh, they don't try only to, like, to squeeze all of the money of this poor little guy. Okay? Uh, another serious topic is, is like, two days ago. Mm -hmm. this, this gold farm. In China, they have businesses of people like, 
playing the games more to generate in-game gold. Um, and this is really not fun. They can force them to make like, the same click all day long or to get all the gold because it's, there's a huge economy behind it. And the Chinese, well, of course, not only the Chinese guys, but the Chinese are very famous for this, for this topic. Um, of course, we do, do this, and I think this topic is about people working in coal mines uh, in the night shift, and on the, 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 when it's daylight, it's, they're like playing the online games, just using them. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you very much. Um, questions, of course. You can ask questions now. If you have questions about anything, or was it not difficult? Or is there not something you get? Um, do you consider mobile games a completely separate topic? I do. Um, because of our business. Because our business of our legends is a revenue share model. And our company can only work with game publishers who have free to play games. Um, because of our business model. And we're thinking about taking the modern gaming market. So like my, my knowledge base about mobile games is not that big, okay? So this is why I don't want to talk about it. But um, they're very, very important, of course. All this uh, Angry Bird stuff and so, so which are for free too on the iPhone, for example, the Android, are important. It's the gaming business too, and if you go to any gaming event, there will be like the online game developers and the mobile game developers, uh, which is the topic, but nothing I was going to talk about today. Can I ask you about the figures you give us? You said only 10% of your registered users are playing regularly. Yeah. And only 10% of those are purchasing content. No, no. Was no. 10% of 10% or just that same 10%? No, no, no it's different. We have a part of, um, oh, I could, can I draw on them? Basically, you have the registered players. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then you have it on this, okay? Okay. We have a circle. The registered players, the most registered players. Then you have ten percent mm -hmm. of them become active, mm -hmm. and then ten of them, of them, meaning one percent of the first part, only one person is paying. This person is paying one hundred or two hundred, which is enough for. That probably depends on the game. Please? That probably depends on the game. I mean, the conversion rates between the stages in the chain. Exactly. So it depends on. On even being a client social game or a browser game, for example. So for the social games, the, the conversion to paying is way less. So only, I think as far as I know, one person even. But the amount of players they have is bigger. So it's like the same level again. And with all the content. Uh, yeah. It may sound a pathetic question to a business owner, but still, you're saying a lot about the addiction and the bad part that the games industry brings in our lives. Have you ever thought of developing some, I don't know, socially meaningful game that would, uh, I don't know, improve people's lives, like training them to be, I don't know, good citizens or something? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That may be a good business idea. <laughs> there are games like that, but they don't make money. Don't make money? No. Why so, not? I don't know. Um, there is, for example, a game where you're like, you are an immigrant and you play the game, all the people in the mall are looking at you as, as if you're like, like an alien or whatever. And it doesn't have any paying business model behind it, so of course it doesn't make money. Um, so like, there are <laughs> games for this, helping them, them in the real life, but they're not successful in case of monetization. Probably it could take some hours to think about because the, I love everything where no solution is available yet and think about it, you can do this if you want to, um, but it will be difficult. And it will be difficult to find a partner helping with this one, except probably the, the, the state, if you do a good thing about it. Um, I know many people caring about accessible games, for example, for, which are games for people who are blind, for example, um, and helping them to develop those games, uh, and they're really poor. So, the developers really don't care. This is a bad thing, and the people, the people trying to change this, uh, are not pretty successful yet. So if you want, and if you like, 
you're one of the good guys, which is very good and very important, and I like this, and I am one of the good guys too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you should think about it, of course. And you, of course, you can you will find someone, you can, can, can talk about it and look for possible partners in order to, to release the game and to, to do the marketing for it, because the thing what Legends does is um, we help developers to find marketing because they don't have to, the money to pay the marketing. So, um, for example, in Germany, you have the TV station of RTL or whatever. Um, they're buying the marketing for the developer, and then both parts get a slice of the revenue. This is the revenue share deal. Um, this is what we do. So, if you have a game or an idea for releasing a game or whatever, you can talk to us because we can help you find <coughs> partners. Uh, well, we got to this, uh, this, is more, this is why I'm traveling to Argentina. Tomorrow. You, your content does develop and publish games. They both do both. None of them, because we have the network. We are like connecting all the partners. We don't do the translation. We have companies like like Korean translations who do the translations for us. We have companies who do the community management. The only thing we do is the payment. This is like a, this is a legal thing. Legal part. We try <laughs> to do it differently. Uh, if you're really interested in this one, we try to, to, to do it differently uh, with the Bulgarian company, and they make lots of money. And then like, okay, this is our invoice. Here, please tell us, so our money please. And they didn't send us anything. So we're like, okay, we shouldn't change our business model, and now we collect all the money, and then give it to the funds. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So what is the name of the game? Oh, I really don't know the name of like two years ago, like, this uh, accessible games person showed it to me, and was like, this is interesting. And play it, and you really, if you're really uncomfortable, and you can talk to other, other people, like, hello, where is the toilet, for example? And they're like, oh my god, you're an immigrant, you're wait. And there's like, there's like other topics, like people in wheelchairs, for example, have this comparable experience, and this is what you learn in those games. And like, I don't know, any game, like every game in the world, I know they're like good games too, uh, but they really don't make them money. This is the problem, though. if you find a way to, make a, a, a revenue of it. Yes. Uh, that's a strange thing because if you, well, strategy games are really popular because yeah. you can develop, you know, it can be better than you, your, than you are in your real life. Yeah. And for example, Sims. <coughs> Have I heard of Sims? I guess. Mm -hmm. It's very popular. Basically, you build the city or something. Yeah. Why can't you develop something similar but not build the city maybe or, well, yes, build the city and make it better, for example, Cleaner streets, organized. In a real city, real city, like yeah, well, well like Limerick? make a game which would have that content. I mean, <laughs> not it's, that not, <laughs> it's not that di different from The Sims. You know, why why can't they generate money? I can't understand the big difference actually. You change well, the goal. Probably they just yeah. Uh, but you just you change the goal from the accumulation of wealth to greener things. So people buy windmill. Like you have access to fossil fuel electricity to begin with, and then windmills are an add-on that you have to buy. So therefore, you're encouraging people to become green, and yeah. then you make the money by the add-on. Why not? Yes. But then, uh, is the moral then not compromised by? Um, if you, there's a guy who made a windmill game, that's what I'm talking about. His name's Ian Goss. And his game is free because it has to be free to have that strong moral message. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a there's a difference here between a moral game and a game that makes money. And I don't know. I think I think two things don't exist can't ever really cross over. Well, this is like a huge opportunity for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we'll localize games. We don't develop games. We we just play. Yeah, but well, I think you like to think and to improve things. So. If you have like a few minutes and not translate all the way down, you can think about it. This is what I like. I like to think about things. How to make it better, of course. Not, like, gaming is my world. And, uh, doing different things and thinking about what changes are there and this. And like, do this, really do this, please. Because there are people who don't. And there are people necessary to do. So do it. Um, just so you want to have a game, like changing the players. Improving their minds, not improving their lives. Because the first thing I understood, uh, yeah. I understood wrongly, which is like uh, driving the back from playing to being more in the, the real life again. Okay, so I will think about it the next two hours because there will be another presentation. I will tell you if I have another solution.
Yeah, Nintendo do a lot of sort of stuff. Nintendo are like, go for a walk with your yeah. DS and meet people, real people, yeah. but you also have to have a DS in your walk. But that's, that's, I think that's important. Yeah, and the Nintendo thing is fun because you have this, this Wii board, for example, play healthy. Okay, you know, it's sold pretty well, but how many people use this? So, like, like you buy a brand new uh, sports, um, how do you call it, machine? You buy it, okay, you bought it, you're one of the dudes buying it, but do you really use it? You don't know if they use it, I really doubt because I don't like it, and the people I talk to don't like it, and the people who have it don't use it. There's, like, there's, uh, yeah, what was it, stop? There's, there's dust on it. So you're visiting them home, there's dust on them, this, this thing, and like, ah, yeah, you lost lots of weight. <laughs> so, you saying that, uh, like, well, games your life. That's, I'm not quoting you. You said that a few seconds ago. Yeah. And uh, I, I'd say the same thing, but I think of them in terms of stories. Yeah. Um, do you, like, games are about making money. All art is about making money at a certain level. Um, do you um, think there's I place? hate to interrupt this, but we need to set up for the next um, session, and there's coffee downstairs, so maybe you could to yeah. the question. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I like coffee. Yeah. This is my other hobby.